Hi everyone, I am Sarav Agrawal. I am a partner with EY India Practice. I co-lead the investment growth group in the firm which focuses around inbound investments into the country. As a firm, we are a practice of 100,000 professionals who are into multidisciplinary activities such as assurance, tax, advisory, strategy and transactions. Our focus as far as the semiconductor industry has been to focus around the advocacy needs of the industry and make the plans in terms of various subsidies which the Indian government should offer for the semiconductor and its ecosystem. We focus around site selection and planning, construction and operational stand-up and monitor and optimize the overall performance once the industry is set up in India. So just like any other government in the world, whether it is US, UK, China, every government wants to be self-reliant. Semiconductor today is required in nearly every industry, whether it is telecom, auto and other any electronic industry. Therefore, it is the requirement of the R to have a semiconductor industry in the country in order to ensure that we are having a self-sustained environment in the country. Second, we are uh, not getting disrupted by the global supply chain disruptions and at the same time we are able to promote sectors like telecom, electronics, automobile, etc. It's important to understand that automobile has been one of the sectors which has led to a significant growth of manufacturing GDP in the country which is also now getting more and more reliant on the semiconductor industry as we move towards electric vehicles. At the same time, when we look into the policies of the Indian government in terms of production linked incentive schemes for telecom, electronics sector, etc., it's all in all the requirement of the industry which is leading us to focus on developing the semicon manufacturing in the country. If we look at last five years, the focus of the Indian government has moved from made in India to make in India, which is more towards deeper localization. Accordingly, Indian government has come up with production linked incentive schemes in around 14 sectors and around three more programs around advanced chemistry cell, semiconductor and green hydrogen focusing around providing subsidies to these sectors so that they can develop a supply chain ecosystem in the country which is leading to manufacturing in these specified sectors. Many of these sectors require semiconductor as one of the important raw material and accordingly Indian government has earmarked funds of around 10 billion dollars to support this particular industry through the semiconductor program. Many of these particular uh, funds are allocated towards various schemes of the central government which is ranging from semiconductor fab, display fab, semiconductor assembly and packaging units. The central government in turn is offering subsidies up to 50% of the project cost. This is not just uh, restricted to the central government incentives, even the state governments in India are offering subsidies ranging from 25% and going up to as high as 50 to 75% of the project cost in India. Many of these subsidies from the state governments are in the form of a capital subsidy which are linked to investments. Some of them are linked to expenditure in the form of a land cost subsidy, electricity duty, tax waiver or concession sales link subsidy in the form of a GST reimbursement. Overall, if I look at and if I add all these subsidies together, today Indian government offers close to 70% to 100% of your investment back in absolute terms over a period of 5 to 10 years in order to support the semiconductor industry. In, within the tax environment, the government was very clear to bring down the duties on raw materials and critical minerals required for semiconductors. Similarly, as far as the intermediates are concerned, government is very clear that as and when the supply chain gets developed, they will uh, start bringing down the concessions around customs duty and they'll increase the duties on finished goods. But this is only done for a short span of time till the time the supply chain develops in the country. We have seen in the mobile phone industry as and when the supply chain got developed in this year's budget, government has, bring down, has brought down the rate of customs duty on mobile phone to 15%. Which means that the clear thought process of the government is 
to provide a level playing field to both foreign as well as the local manufacturing. This being said, if we look at the focus of the Indian government in order to develop the semiconductor industry should be one on development of skills, two on development of electronic manufacturing clusters and third in order to provide a clear single window clearance system in order to make available the land at the right prices and all the other regulatory clearances required in order to start the construction of the factory and subsequent operations of the factory. So if we look at the current state of semiconductor industry in India, the total market opportunity for semiconductors in India by 2030 is growing at a rate of around 24% CAGR and we estimate it close to be around a $150 billion opportunity. There are 100 plus startups in India who are working in this area out of Bangalore. 2.4x year-on-year growth in the Indian semiconductor startups since its launch of the mission in 2014 where the Indian government started focusing around semiconductors. 20% of the global semiconductor IC design workforce comes from India. That being said, it's important to understand that India has a demographic dividend advantage. 25% of the incremental global workforce is coming from India. The age of our population or the working population, the average median age is around 29 years in 2020, which means that the working age is in the range of 72% uh, of the population who is working is in the range of around 15 to 65 years. Lot of GCCs are considering India as a IT hub. We have around 1500 global capability centers working out of India, which comprises of around 40% of the global GCCs. The thriving entrepreneurship and distillation has led to around 107 unicorns uh, start, which are startups uh, by August 2022 in India, which is again leading to a, a more and more demand of semiconductor. The manufacturing competitiveness has been one of the key aims of the Indian government, which is again leading to overall semiconductor sector thriving in the Indian, uh, Indian ecosystem. Further to add upon it, the low corporate income tax rate which is offered by the Indian government, the global innovation index in which India ranks number one compared to Southeast Asian countries, the ease of credit where India ranks number one compared to any other Southeast Asian country leads to overall development of a semicon sector in India. When we talk about the key players who are investing in this sector, some of the key players are Tata, PSMC joint venture, a Tata group uh, uh, investing some more amount into the semiconductor space standalone, Micron, Renesis, uh, APACT, Tower Semiconductor, Case Technology, HCL Tech, Foxconn, JV, uh, Hiranandani Group, LNT, so on and so forth. Some of the other players who have announced investments in the said space, more around the RDR. Applied Material, AMD, LAM Research, Qualcomm and many others to name some more. It can be NXP, Intel, Cadence, Qualcomm. Nearly everyone is focusing around the semicon sector in India. Of course, the amount of investments may be varying from company to company at this stage of time. I think some of the key challenges in India has been acquiring the land and thereafter getting licenses to set up the factory. This entire cycle takes one to one and a half years time to start the construction of the factory. That's one area where we need to improve upon while we, the government has focused quite a lot on the same and they are open and for our investment from a semicon uh, industry, government is clearly assigning a single window clearance for the same. But still this is one area where I see that we need to uh, stress upon more. Second area what we need to focus upon is while Indian government has offered such significant subsidies it's important for the industry also to ensure they that they run it like a project management office so that they can get these subsidies in a time bound manner so that the IRR which they have factored initially as a return on their investment they are actually able to achieve it by getting the right set of subsidies from the government which requires a lot of documentation so project management becomes very important. 
The third thing which I look forward and where I feel that we need to develop more is around the skilling. I think the government is very clear that they need to focus around the skilling program in this particular area and the skilling therefore becomes an important area where we need to work with the various academic institutes to ensure that we are developing the right set of skilling in India. I believe that it can be because of multifold things. First one being setting up the manufacturing shops in India. Second one being uh, by doing the joint venture partnerships with the Indian conglomerate. Third one being the technology collaboration agreements with the Indians who are planning to set up shops in India. Fourth one being by way of supporting the skill development because the Koreans do have the right set of skilling required for development of semicon sector in the country. Fifth one being by way of being an investor, by way of investing through venture capital or by way of a private equity in the Indian companies who are planning to set up the Indian Semicon manufacturing or design. Uh, sixth one being by supporting those sectors where actually the Semicon will be used as an offtake. For example, it can be an electronic sector, it can be an automobile sector, it can be a telecom sector. And lastly, when I look at other Korean companies can focus upon overall setting up institutions in India who are actually imparting the right level of engineering to our people in order to attain the India's vision of developing semicon manufacturing in the country. If we look at one of the Korean companies recently, APACT has uh, set up a joint venture with an Indian company called as ASIP to support the semicon assembly and testing in the electronic manufacturing cluster based out of Hyderabad, which is the first step which I have seen a Korean company has taken to set up, a, you can say, a, or intend to set up a manufacturing in India. But when I look at other Korean companies, so far we have been hearing that multiple Korean companies are in discussion with a lot of Indian partners to set up a semicon manufacturing in India, but so far nothing has concluded. It's very important for the Korean companies to understand that's the right time to enter the Indian market. Lot of companies based out of Taiwan, Japan and many other uh, parts of the world are lining up to do a partnership with the Indian companies in this particular space. Mm -hmm.